Astronaut Scott Kelly will end his nearly year-long mission in space Tuesday night. Monday, Kelly tweeted one of his favorite pictures from the past year. After 340 days on the International Space Station, he will land in Kazakhstan Tuesday at around 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Kelly will then fly back to the Johnson Space Center in Houston. But before he gets to go home to his family, Kelly will go through extensive tests to help him readapt to life on Earth. To give us a little more insight, we're joined by Derek Pitts, chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. Uh, Derek, this story is so fascinating to me. Can you just talk about the tests that Scott Kelly is going to undergo immediately once he lands? Well, as soon as he lands, one of the, uh, a, a, a few of the tests that he's going to go through is they're, of course, going to check his cardiovascular system completely because while he was in 1G, his heart has not had to work so hard because it's not under the influence of gravity so there will be uh, some work to determine how strong his heart muscle is check and see what the resilience is of his blood vessels and uh, they'll also be checking to see what the status of his musculature is because also while you're in 1G you do find that there is some uh, loss of muscle tone uh, while you're in space and even though he exercised quite a bit while he was in space, still not under 1G, so they're going to be testing for that. And then they'll also look at his bone density, because one of the things that happens in zero gravity is that bones stop producing bone cells. And so as that stops, the bones become more brittle. Now, he's not in any danger in any of this, but of course, they want to just find out to what degree there has been some change in the, in the bone, inner bone structure. Uh, the other thing they'll do is they'll take a look at his eyes because one of the things that has been determined recently, determined recently is that under one uh, zero-g conditions, there have been some uh, deformation of the eye structure that has caused some concern among uh, doctors as they look at astronauts coming back from space. Ah, oh, really interesting. I hadn't heard that before. Uh, what about generally speaking, when it comes to the rehabilitation process, what happens when astronauts return to Earth? What is that time period like for them? Well, it can be a little challenging at first. Uh, historically speaking, it used to be that when space shuttle astronauts returned from space, they would get out of the space shuttle and immediately go out to walk around the craft, which is something that pilots normally do. But because uh, astronauts that had been in space for a week or more had the need to try to get their Earth legs back, if you will, being back in 1G, so uh, when they first come back, in this case, I think Scott's going to see a lot of, not exactly bed rest, but that he won't be up walking around a tremendous amount to begin with. It'll take him a day or so to get used to that again. So, you know, when we first see him, you might think maybe he's laid out on a couch, which is typically what happens when astronauts come back, but they won't have him up and walking around for at least a day. Yeah, I mean, 340 days is a long time to be It is up a there. long time, that's true. Uh, let me ask you this. The whole point of this mission was to see what happens to human bodies in space using Scott's twin brother, Mark, as the kind of control subject. Do we have any idea what new tests they might do specific to this experiment? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I know that a lot of these tests that they're going to do are new in the sense that, you know, the work that they're going to do is they're going to look at his brother who's remained here on Earth and look at him to see what kind of differences uh, may have taken place. I would certainly imagine that they would uh, look at look at uh, Scott at the cellular level to see if there are any cellular changes, uh, any DNA changes, anything like that that happens way down at the cellular level as a result of him being outside of the Earth's atmosphere, up above the Earth 200 miles for uh, this 340 days. So I think there will be more things like that that we see uh, that are at that cellular level also. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is something that I found interesting in reading about this, this idea that there's space radiation out there, Derek, you know, and that is something that they don't quite understand what could the long-term effects of that be. What is that exactly, space radiation? Well, uh, well the space environment is a nasty environment. It, ha it really is a terrible environment. It's not very good for us to be in at all. So. 
here on Earth, our atmosphere and our magnetic field protect us very well from the radiation that's generated by our sun, our star, and that radiation pervades all of the environment of the solar system. So now Scott has had a higher level of exposure to that over this last 340 days than his brother Mark has had. So when I talk about them examining at a cellular level what changes might have happened inside the cells or changes that might have happened to DNA, I'm actually talking about that impact of radiation on the body having been in space for 340 days. Mm, very quickly here, Derek, psychological effects. What could some of the psychological effects of being in space that long be? Well, the way I like to portray it for people is just think. Imagine you were in a station wagon with your family traveling for one whole year and you can't roll down the windows, you can't get out, and you're stuck there and you know you can do telephone calls and things like that but that psychological piece is really important to consider because long duration trips in space are going to require that you have the psychological profiling capability to be able to work with a small group and be in a closed space for a long time all right like being in a station wagon not being able to roll down the windows okay you all know what that's like oh yes we do derek pitts thank you so much thanks elaine